Good morning, everybody. It's me, Mitch. Title of this video contains the phrase, it's all about the money, honey. Sometimes we don't realize that even though it's been said that money is the root of all evil, the reality is money is pretty much at the root of everything because having money has become so important to us because money equals security. Security equals survivability. Therefore, having money plays into the single most important survival instinct. Having money to us was like having food used to be to our prehistoric ancestors. It was security. Greed is something that naturally just comes from that. And we all want security. We all want to know that we're prepared for tomorrow. And that was great. And it worked, worked good and motivated people to find food back in the old days. But in our society, we have become just so incredibly materialistic because how could we not? Because everything just plays into our emotional drives. The two primary emotions, the two primary emotions that pretty much drive the continuation of life in all of its forms are survival and reproduction. And sometimes I think that we have to distill everything, every message, every marketing campaign, every motive behind our actions, we have to look for its tie to one of those two most basic instincts of all living things, survive and reproduce. It may sound far-fetched, but if you analyze, if you deeply analyze all marketing of basically everything, at the root emotional core of these messages, you will find a tie to survival or reproduction. And by reproduction, that immediately leads me to talk about sex. Because sex is incredibly important to human beings. So if you're a marketing person, and you want to make money because by making money you feel more secure aim your product at these two major two major instinctual emotional drives security and survival being I think the most powerful and I think that it, it has driven the growth of some of the biggest industries that we have. Those industries sell you 
protection. Because protection is the thing you want if you want to survive. Life insurance doesn't protect you from dying. But you have the illusion of protection and it appeals it appeals to that survival instinct. And it's easy to sell somebody things based on protection. Just scare them into it. Tell them all the bad things that are going to happen to them if they don't buy your product. If you can't sell something based on the survival instinct, throw sex into it. And at the root of almost all other marketing campaigns, somehow is an appeal to our instinct to have sex. And if you analyze and look deeply, you'll find that this message is everywhere. Everything. Diet Coke. Drink Diet Coke, get skinny and beautiful, and get laid. Buy this sexy looking new car. The girls will flock to you and you'll get laid. Buy these clothes and you'll attract the opposite sex and get laid. Wear this cologne, you'll attract the opposite sex and get laid. Take this diet pill, get skinny. So you can attract the opposite sex and get laid. You can find these two. You can find these two. Prime motivations behind pretty much everything that our whole society is built around. And it's obvious once you know what to look for. So you've got all these marketing people trying to scare you into buying their product so you can be protected and survive. And if that doesn't work, buy their product so that you can attract members of the opposite sex and get laid. On top of those basic things, we have learned the science of addiction. So now, we can add a third level to our marketing appeals, and that is, if you can't appeal to protecting somebody and you can't get them laid, play to their addictions. And in came the addictive business model. But all of these different tactics to get you to spend your money and because of all these things and their effects on us over the last hundred years of the communication that we have, the internet that we have, and all these other things, we find ourselves having bought all of it. And we bought all of it because somebody made money selling it to us. So what do we do? How do we fix these things? Well, we can't fix. We cannot fix this. Or do we want to fix the human animal's desire to survive and reproduce because that would end the species. But what we do want to fix are all of these sales appeals to the addictions that we have and most of which they've created for us. Problem is, as we all well know, that this has gone too far for too long. And we're now an addicted nation, addicted to junk food. It's been part of our culture now. It's part of our everyday lifestyle. It's part of what we have, and it will never change, no matter how many of us come on here telling you to eat meat and don't eat junk food. 
It won't change because nobody can make any money. Nobody can make any money in any mass quantities by trying to help the, what I think are 80 to 90 percent of the people of the world that are now addicted to carbohydrates. I've talked about the economic collapse that would happen if we tried to change it overnight, and we can't change it overnight. So I want to propose to you what I think is the only solution to the problem that has any chance, any chance long term, of even maybe addressing this and, and doing anything meaningful or worthwhile in affecting a change. And that is, you ready for this? Drum roll. We must turn to private industry to address this problem, figure out a way that they can make enormous sums of money figuring a way to help people cure their addictions and educate them to the realities of what we're doing to ourselves with our current paradigm. Now, I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but there actually are a few people who've started in that right direction. That is, how do we make money? Because it's all about the money, honey. Everything is. We can all be idealistic. We can all say it isn't right. It's not fair. Doesn't matter. The only realistic way that you can motivate human beings in general to do anything is figure out a way that they can make money doing it because making money helps them survive and get laid. As an example of what we might do, I'm going to point out what Sean Baker's doing with his Rivero Healthcare. He, he, he knows that this needs to be done. He knows that it takes a business enterprise with a profit motive. Sean Baker gets this. Whether he realizes it or not, he's on the right track. And he's formed an organization dedicated to helping people get on a carnivore lifestyle, get the right dietary advice, but he's done it in a private enterprise business setting whose goal is to make money because making money is what motivates people to do anything. Whether it's something good or bad, they still want to make money. His, his enterprise has 8,000 people on the waiting list, which is nothing, a drop in the bucket of the hundreds of millions of people that are suffering as victims of the current paradigm that we have. But it's what needs to be done, and it needs to be done on a massive scale. How that can be done, I don't know. I know what needs to be done. I know that nothing else that we do is going to do any good in a short enough period of time to turn this huge ship around of people getting sick, disease and chronic illness rates rising at rapid rates, shortages of hospital space and nursing home space. How do we turn this around? We do it by figuring out a way somebody or some organizations can make massive amounts of money and have it in their best interest to help the human race without the potential profit, human nature will not allow anybody but a few do-gooders 
to shout this message from the hilltops. So, any of you that really want to do some good, think about that. Think about what, what can we do that will allow people to have a profit motive to affect the changes that will unaddict the American public from sugar. Sounds a little far-fetched, I know. Sounds like a pipe dream, I know. But you know, it's reality. To ignore reality is to put your head in the sand. But when you do that, there's a certain part of you that is exposed and makes a great target. And that's the way we've been living. Sorry, folks. That's the best I've got right now. Other than doing what we're doing, one person at a time. One person at a time to wake up and realize what's best for their health and start eating this kind of stuff instead of what the majority of other people have been conned into believing is healthy for them. Contemplate on that while you take the rest of the day off and eat meat. Thank <laughs> you.